Hi, I'm Stephen Feinberg, Executive Director of the Rhode Island Film and Television Office. Our guest tonight is an accomplished actor, performer, artist, and I am so happy and privileged that he's with us today. Michael, Michael Grando, yes. thank you so much for thank coming you, to Steve. Double Feature. Thank you, thank you. So you have been performing for years, um, and you're an artist. You do you do jewelry, right? Yes. Um, you, uh, as an artist, you do mime work. You yes. You do stage. You've done ballet. Right. The whole. You really. You really are the essence of a performer. Thank you. Um, how did you get started? I knew you grew <clears throat> up in Niagara Falls, right? Near, near Niagara Falls in Eggertsville, about uh, maybe 15 miles from the falls. And what brought you to Rhode Island? Um, I came here. First experience in Rhode Island was uh, to participate in a theater festival uh, when the State Council on the Arts had a large one years ago, 1971, I believe it was. And I played a number of the schools in the area and gave workshops and so forth. That was my first exposure. And then I had an offer to come up here and teach at URI, Brown, and Roger Williams, sort of like artist in residence in various places. And I did that for 10 years. and. You know, I decided 10 years investment here, I would stay. I love it here. This guy loves Rhode <laughs> it's Island. It's a beautiful spot. Um, and then you uh, evolved into mime? I, I, um, I, I became, a, a, well, as a child, I, I watched a lot of silent film. I watched a lot of silent film, and my brother mentored me, and he took me to see films when I was in my teens that Jean Cocteau had made and other people, not silent, but really classically different from our filmmaking, you know, at that time. Right. And uh, I kind of fell in love with the idea of, um, well, m movement always impressed me. And a acting is, everything for a mime happens, but, uh, but the word, you know. So I, 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 I got into that um, when I started imitating people. And my mother said, oh, you're a born mimic, you're a born mimic, and, and <laughs> kind of stuck. You know, I uh, saw Marceau on TV for, as a kid in, in my, uh, probably like 13 or 14, probably younger even. And um, I said to my father, oh, look, I, I mean, I didn't know I, there were silent films. That, but my silence was Charlie Chaplin, Ben Buster Turpin, Keaton. Buster Keaton, all the greats, you know. And uh, later on, you know, things like The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari and the things yeah. that came in that genre. But um, The German Expressionism. Uh, yes, yes, very powerful stuff, you know, very, very wonderful. And um, I said to my dad, gee, gee, look, look, someone <laughs> isn't talking, but he's doing something really great. I said, I'd like to do that, you know. And my dad encouraged me, my mother did too. And uh, years later, I um, called from Buffalo while, um, while Marceau was in New York and arranged an audition with him to go and study with him and just showed him a few things. And he said, Come if you can. We're in Paris. We're going to do it this time, you know. And I did. Went following year. Spent not a long time with him, but enough for him to tell me that um, that I that I was probably wasting my time studying someone else's technique. That I had the talent. And I should go out and try it right away. Get wow. started. Wow! And you did. I did. And he said some unique things to me. He said, "You know, we're going to be friends all our life." I said, "We are." He said, "We are," and we were. Isn't that right wonderful? Up until his death. And I mean, you even uh, turned this into an opportunity where you were on the Tonight Show. Yes, uh, at that time, I, 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 I segued into mime in New York. Very hard to say. Oh, I'm a mime. Give me a job. Put me on stage. I'm really going to be a hit. Right. <laughs> it doesn't. Right. Show business does not work that right, way. You know? Right. 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 And anyone who's in it knows that, that is you. And um, uh, I was working with some people who had a multimedia experience. All that time was happening with uh, stuff on the West Coast, the family dog, the this, the that, the next thing, you know. And we did something called, um, uh, uh, what the heck was the show we called? We called the Group Image Show, and it was at the Palm Gardens at 8th Avenue and West 52nd Street. And, you know, it was this conglomeration of musicians and hippies and I don't know what all, but it was like, it was trying to imitate the West Coast that was happening out there. Mm -hmm. And they needed, uh, they needed stuff to show, so there were the bands. But they ran into this problem where when you, when, you, when you changed a band set, 
you had to take all the stuff off the stage. Transition. You need it needed to be a transition. And I became the filler with oh, some wow. original material. I trained four people to work with me, and they all copped out the last minute, and I became a soloist that night. Okay. But that's where it began. And so then you did The Tonight Show. Then, uh, after that, I got hired to work in a place called The Electric Circus in New York, which next year will be 50 years that I did that, and there's going to be a huge documentary, I hope, on PBS about it. I did a lengthy interview about it recently, but um, long story short, started there, and one night, one of the uh, talent coordinators, Bob Garland, happened to be in the show, in the, uh, the room audience. that night, in the audience, and he saw me, and he came backstage and said, would you like to do The Tonight Show? And I said, when do I start? Wow. You know? And uh, managed to do that. So you did it with Johnny while well, Johnny I did it with Carson. Johnny. I, I got bumped six times before I appeared on the seventh. I did it uh, first round with John and the next round with uh, uh, Carl Reiner. As How is, uh, and I know Carl Reiner asked you to take the makeup yes, off. Yes, he did. And, and what was that like? Uh, oh, I was floored, you know. I was floored. First of all, he, he knew that I, I wouldn't speak with the mask on, you know, right. traditional. But he said, Andrew, go off, go off, take it off, because I want to interview I want to interview So he brought me out, and we talked at length, and then he said, turn, turn to the camera. He said, you've got the best profile since Barrymore. I said, oh, no. no. Uh, if I'd only known then, I would have started talking. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but a gem of a man, yeah, totally loving, uh, knew, I think, unconsciously and consciously, what a mime is up against in terms of like keeping themselves working the right. rest of their life. Right. You know? But uh, just a wonderful experience. Now, you also have worked uh, on Water Fire. Yes. What do you do on Water Fire again? In Water Fire, I appear as Pierrot in a traditional Pierrot costume with a crazed sort of a chapeau. Uh, and that's the character who's, who's pining it? for love. Oh, yes. Right, yes. pining yes. for pining love. Pining for love never finds right, right. his the columbina. Elusive love. Oh, my God. The, the elusive know. love. The elusive love. So I'm going up and down that river with flowers. Wow. Looking at the ladies, you know, yeah. and, and, and giving them, and, and men too, flowers. Men can have flowers yeah. too. There's nothing wrong with that. And, and, and greeting them and just interchanging the energy. You know, it's amazing to see. You can't do an entire show while you're going by them at eight miles an hour. Right. But you can engage people in a way that sometimes is so dramatic and wonderful. I've heard people see me come around the corner and suddenly go, ah, take a breath because it's something they've never seen before. Or, or react with complete shyness, or be totally shocked if you disturb them. They're by the river texting, and you put the flower in their face, and suddenly there's a man in a boat next to you with this face and mask and so forth. He's giving you a flower, and there's a shriek, you know? Yeah. All kinds of wonderful reactions. And you've also done, we worked with Festival Ballet as yes, well. Yes, yes. I did the first through seven seasons. I played uh, Drosselmeyer in the Nutcracker for the, wow. the character role. And then you decided to take an opportunity to work on a film directed by Eric Latek, stars uh, Armin Garrow yes. and yourself, and you said it's, it was 50 years you hadn't spoken. I hadn't really film. spoken at all. And you did a scene, and you did a film, a short film called Shivering. Yes. How was that experience? Oh, well, Armin called me. Armin and I have known each other a number of years. Uh, uh, great actor, wonderful person, love him dearly, good friend. And um, he said, are you, up, are you up for a speaking role? <laughs> I said, in what? He says, a short film, short narrative film. I said, oh man, I don't know, you know, send me the script. But if Armin asked me, I would pay attention because there's a, you know, just there's something with Armin, pay attention if he says something to you. Because he's actor. terrific. He's a terrific guy. So he sent me the script. And I took a look at it, and I was, whew, I was floored. I was afraid, actually. Um, I fit the description, <laughs> not 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 like reality, right. but physically and so he, forth. He he was right there, and I said, "Yeah, I could probably do this," but it really frightened me because it's raw. It's raw. It's rough. It's tough. It's uh, it made me afraid, in a sense, as an actor. But then I said, actor, you can't be afraid. You know, you can't be afraid. Marceau taught me to be brave on the stage, and this is just an extension of that idea. So I knuckled down, looked at it, and said, I'll give it a shot. Here's another transition. Transition from the piano to the couch.
I kind of thought I'd be seeing you someday. Yeah. How to ruin a marriage first. Yeah. I've ruined one too. Wasn't too hard to do, actually. I'm shocked. Yeah. She was nuts anyhow. So, uh, why are you here? What's the purpose of the visit? I don't want anything. Light in the dark corners, my brother, you know what I mean? Light it up, that's what film's about. I mean, show a story, so. I, I, I jumped on it then because I realized it was the opportunity of a lifetime. And you won an award by the Rhode Island International Film Festival for that performance. It was, to me, it was riveting, raw, vulnerable, and uh, uh, real. It felt real. Yeah. And uh, Eric is a good director, Armin's a great actor. And you're a great actor. Thank you, thank you, Steve. That's nice to hear. <laughs> <laughs> did you know? your, um, did you find that uh, you know your your foundation of uh, communicating without voice, your body using your body as an instrument? How helpful that must have been. It was very helpful, and it was helpful in ways I didn't imagine. Uh, the voice of the character Walter in the Shivering. I, I, when I hear him, I don't hear myself. I hear, I hear Walter. And that was, that, that really, I don't know where that came from, you know, from the minute the doorbell rings, you know, and so forth. And I realized that for some reason that thing that happened on the stage, that I love to have happen on the stage, happened for me in the film. Oh. It was just an explosion in my head about, to make that transition. And how good you are. Thank you. I mean, uh, do you have any, what, what's your, what do you want to do next? Oh, golly. Well, Eric has mentioned, <clears throat> we're going to play around with a little maquette, a little short film, where I'm going to try and recreate, to some degree, uh, the role that Lon Chaney Sr. did in London After Midnight, which is a lost film. And uh, there's another film coming up um, that Eric has, full length, that I believe will be shooting in 2007. Teen. Teen. <laughs> <laughs> Going back in time. Um, uh, that I, uh, Eric says it's a nice role in that for me and for Armin. We hope to be able to coordinate everything yeah. to make a feature in yeah. Rhode Island. Yeah, I know. And I, I also, you know, it's funny that you said about London After Midnight because I was thinking you would have been a great phantom, uh, you know, playing as the phantom. Well. You know, uh, I have a short film, it's on YouTube. I didn't enter it in anything really because it wasn't finished when we, all that was happening in my life. But um, it's on YouTube, it's called The Phantom Boatman, Final Cut. Oh. It's 11 minutes long, silent, black and white. And it was a, the first emergence of having to act that I had as a, an elder adult, you mm -hmm. know? But I, I, I was inspired by, by the darkness on the water under the soup, you know, the substructures of water fire, realized there was a darker element there, and you know, it would not leave me alone till I, till I, made a, a short film about it, and I played the Phantom in that. Oh, cool! So that's pretty cool. Well, I just want to say that you are superb, Thank you. and I'm glad that you found your voice back on film because so it's I. something special. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure.